Coach Massey here from M2 Speed Strength and Performance, Massey Machado Strength and Conditioning, with another episode of Move Your Feet. And last episode, we actually received a viewer email from a gentleman named Marco. He had purchased a new Tsunami bar, and he asked us for some unique movements with that bar. So we basically did an offset, rear-stepping, active split squat, and I encourage you to go back and take a look at that episode before you get into today's episode. But in any event, we're gonna move on, and today, we're gonna actually get out of that more vertical realm and go into the horizontal realm, and we're gonna do what's called a horizontal rear-stepping modified sumo squat, and you'll see why in a couple of seconds. So I'm gonna call in Coach Matt real quick, and uh, we're gonna to start to operate through this. So we wanna kinda of work through this and demonstrate this, this movement dry. We've been putting this in with some of our athletes and clients, and it's really helping with their hip mobility, ground acquisition, and obviously horizontal trunk control so they don't flex laterally, and they just have real good command of the concept of tall. So Matt, just purely for, for dry demo purposes, show them what that, that step back looks like. He steps back, and he kind of goes into a modified sumo position. I'll come back around. And you'll see I tell him it's a little round because when we get the bar loaded, you'll see where we have more of that sweeping action like a samurai or sort of a sumo type step back. Give him that shot again. He steps back, he opens his hips up, he comes back. Now Matt, turn facing me so they can see what that looks like towards the camera. Go slow and step back. Boom. Big hip, big opening. It's like a rear stepping, stepping hip open and it could be considered like you know a samurai drawback or more like a sumo, a sumo type warm up. We see when the sumos warm up, they get wide, right? So we're gonna just simply take a smaller tsunami bar and we're gonna work through that progression, Matt, and, and show them what that looks like. So first things first is Matt's gonna assume a good tall posture. He's gonna put tension, attention, and you'll notice it's gonna be loaded to the side where he's stepping back. And he's gonna go slow now, and then we'll show you why it's loaded to that side, because we're gonna have him take a, 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 a more rapid tempo to snap that bar. But first, you wanna make sure your client or athlete has control and command of the movement. So Matt, go ahead, give it a shot. Steps back, command, control, up he goes. I'm looking for ground acquisition. I wanna make sure that he's not flexing laterally. I wanna make sure that he's controlling the bar He's controlling his trunk. He's controlling his vertical line while moving through that sphere, and he has complete command and control. And go ahead, Matt. Boom. So that's what the that's going to be with the right leg. So what would you do if we're going to step back with the left leg? He's just going to flip it to the opposite side. He's going to get that fulcrum. He's going to apply tension. He's going to go attention, and then he's going to move through that plane, stepping back, looking at his hips. I'm looking at that hip line. And, and it's a good, beautiful movement, a beautiful indicator as to whether or not they laterally flex. Matt, do that one more time to this side. And you have to really get your coaching position down here to watch this movement. So I would recommend, if you're not on camera, like I'm trying to instruct here, you would start here and move with him. So Matt, go ahead, boom, and get a look here. I'm looking for his lines, his angles. No and super anterior tilt. He has control here. He pushes into the ground with that front leg, and he gets back. Good, back. Perfect. Now, that's what the movement's supposed to look like, or at least that very base progression. But now we sort of want to run through some of the, the, the variables that you can add. The first and probably most miserable variable that you can add is just take a slider disc, and you're going to put it on that stepping, or I should say now sliding foot, to work towards the back. And you're going to want to tell your client or athlete, hey, look, you're going to need to apply some pressure on the front leg because if you have too much pressure on that rear stepping leg on that slider, you're gonna get stuck. And what I really like about this is it helps your client or athlete begin to understand the balance between their weight distribution, which is very important for a gazillion different reasons. So go ahead, Matt, give him a little shot of that. It's the same movement, it's with a slider, and come back. So now you'll see that there may be a little bit of glitch here or there, maybe he's not really employing that opposite side sartorius, and he's not just commanding that movement yet, so we'll make him go again. Go ahead, Matt, step back, and you're gonna tell him things like, before he goes, tension, attention, 
and then he goes back, talk him through it, sweep, post, drag, or suck it back in. Perfect. Boom. Now, let's go through the other and most simplistic variables. Number one, his fulcrum. Where this sits on his arm can make it easier or more difficult. So Matt, if we want to make this easier, boom, right? So fulcrum is number one, easier, more difficult, bang. Now you saw him move, that's great too. Hand position, where he might put his hands can make it easier or more difficult. It's sort of elementary. The other variables we, we might have here would be speed, any pauses, reps over time, or what we really get concerned of is feet per second. So Matt, can you just take the slider out and then sort of show them that real quick one where you're stepping back, you're generating that power out of that sort of pause in the back and then you're ripping it back through and you're controlling your trunk, your torso, and you're not going to go kyphotic on me, you're going to have good scapular control and you're going to rip it back. So give it a shot. He steps back and he rips it. There you go. Again, come on, three more. Two more, step back. Now control it right back, and one more. Now, as you can see, this is difficult enough. And it's a really, really cool movement to play with that doesn't require a ton of supervision after you get it going. Got to pay attention, adjust your collars, but it's a really good tool. And Matt, just for the heck of it, let's, you know, I know you didn't expect this, but let's get the, the heavier bar more resistance. Obviously, resistance is going to be another variable that will help you progress through this movement. And um, watch the collars there. Obviously, any sort of racket sport where you have that, uh, that, that center line or that dip in the hip coming through, this will be beneficial for. But also, your hitting sports, um, you can also golf baseball, and you can kind of work through the necessary plane that's required for each of those sports and start to apply it. Email us and ask us any questions about how to make that application and we're happy to help. Let's show them this one. Now you're going to see Matt's really going to have to dig in and pay attention to his fulcrum and his hand position from the get-go because this, this is a lot tougher. You have more angle of deflection. This bar is flexible but can handle more resistance so he's going to have to deal with a little bit of angle of deflection, the flexibility. He's going to get oscillation and the amplitude of the oscillation as he rips it back. And Matt, why don't we do that quick one, okay? Quick stepping with speed. Bang, right back into it. Come on, two more. Bang, and one more, and control. And come to the top and show him how you stop at a horizon. Good. Good enough. That's good. Thank you. So... You can also do this up against some grid wall if you really want to be smart about your reference points. But please, we encourage you, email us. We have a lot of movements that we put out. We know it can be overwhelming. We try to you know, do this library sequentially and perform better is really great at helping us to, um, to categorize this and catalog it. But if there's any, any questions ever, just please email. So until next time, this is Coach Massey from M2 Speed Strength and Performance. Massey Machado Strength and Conditioning, reminding you that greatness is forged, not fabricated, and that's your day.